Welcome to Unapologetically Sensitive, where you can learn, relate, laugh, and maybe even live a bolder, brighter life. I'm your host, Patricia Young. This is a weekly podcast where we explore the strengths we have because of our sensitivity and some of the challenges it poses as well. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for help from a licensed mental health professional. I've been talking a lot about getting support, and I'm wondering, do you have support in your life? Do you have people that get you? If not, or you're wanting more of that, or you're just learning about the trait of being a highly sensitive person, you might consider taking the next online HSP course. I've been running them, I think, for close to three years now, and it's a great way to be with other people that are wired like you to learn more about the trait. We talk about mindfulness and self-compassion, identifying negative messages and turning them into superpowers or your strengths, perfectionism, embracing our emotions, self-care is non-negotiable, boundaries, communication, authenticity, and vulnerability, expectations and disappointments, and creating a lifestyle that honors the HSP. It's a 10-week course. Jen Perry and I created videos for each module weekly. There are weekly emails that are sent out. Then we meet for group for an hour and 20 minutes for 10 weeks. And it's an opportunity to be with other people that are wired like you. Of course, there are variations and differences. Many of the groups have gone on to continue to meet on their own, to continue to get support. Obviously, I have no control over how the group goes and who's in it. I do screen. I do my best. But it's a great way to be with other people. And especially, (laughs) we've been in kind of a funky place with COVID and a lot of people are not getting their social needs met. So it's a great way to have a safe way to interact and learn more about the trait, to meet with other people, to learn a little bit more about yourself. The next online HSP course will start the week of April 25th. On Mondays, I'm going to be running a group from 3 to 4.20 PST. And on Tuesdays, starting April 26th from 10 to 11.20 PST. Registration will start on March 30th and go through April 13th. There's an early bird discount. If you want more information, you can go to my website at unapologeticallysensitive.com. There's an HSP groups tab. There are tons of interviews that I've done with people that have taken the course. There are little short blips there. There's some video recordings and explanations about what we cover in each of the weekly groups. If you're interested, I'd love to have you. Hey there. To the creatives, healers, sensitives, and deep thinkers, how are you? This is going to be a little bit of an unusual recording. I have a little bit in mind of what I want to talk about. I'm not doing anything that's with notes, so we'll see how this goes. What I want to talk to you about today is how do we manage when we're in crisis? And I'm personally going through something right now. I've been watching a very close friend of mine go through something pretty serious. And we've been talking and we're very close. And just as I was going through some struggles today, I was wondering if this was helpful. (laughs) Okay, here come the gremlins. They're saying you're just rambling and you're not going anywhere. But here's what I've noticed happens is that it can be really hard for us to acknowledge what we are doing and to minimize. And I think that so many of us are so used to having to push through and do what we have to do to get through. And feel like there's really not a crisis and feeling like we're taking it easy if we take a break or we ask for help and the power of community and allowing people to be there for you. So that's what I'm going to try and aim for. Let's see, where's a good place to start? So let me tell you a little bit about this friend of mine, and then I'll talk about something a little bit more personal. My friend has been going through something. One of their family members got very, very ill. I'm going to just keep this very, very vague. And my friend is a therapist. And as this crisis was unfolding very rapidly and unexpectedly, my friend was thinking that they needed to continue to keep seeing clients. And because they were managing and being very present, we talked about you're in the middle of a crisis right now, and it's really okay for you to cancel clients that you don't need to show up for them. And I think many of us are wired for insane levels of responsibility, and you can count on us, and we don't want to flake out on people, but we're just kind of hard, not all of us, some of us are very hardwired to continue to soldier through and push on. 
And it wasn't until I had talked to this friend about, it's okay to counsel your clients. It's okay to say you have a family member who's in crisis right now and you don't know what the month is going to look like. And what my friend said was they felt a tremendous sense of relief in just knowing that they didn't have to have that level of responsibility. And what's going on with me, and again, I'm going to try and be a little bit vague, but my mom just had a total knee replacement on Friday. Today is Monday. Her friend was kind enough to set up people coming in in four-hour shifts to care for her when she came home from the hospital. The first two nights, somebody was there to spend the night with her. Even though my mom lives with us, we've got the puppy right now. We're getting up at one in the morning. That's one one o'clock in the morning is my job to take the puppy out. Gracie, who has seizures, needs meds at 5 a.m. So Steve gives Gracie her meds at 5, and then he takes the puppy out at 5 a.m. And then with my mom being out of commission, she also has a dog. So (laughs) feeding her dog, walking her dog, making sure the dog's let out at night and is let out in the morning. There's just a lot of moving parts, and it has been wonderful having people here. But my mom is an HSP and, like many HSPs, ends up having reactions to medications. And so we talked to the surgeon, we talked to the anesthesiologist, and when mom came home with some pain meds, she started having some side effects, and we didn't know what they were until it was very clear in the middle of the night last night that she was not doing very well. So we talked to the surgeon this morning who Wanted her to talk to her doctor, but it's President's Day today, so the doctor's not open, and the doctor was concerned about an anaphylactic response and her not being able to breathe, kind of an important thing. So the recommendation was to go to the emergency room. Now, a couple of things that I've noticed that are going on here with me. My mom and I have done a tremendous amount of healing, and I think it's very common that when we're not feeling well, when we're not doing well, we just are not able to advocate for ourselves. So I want to normalize this. And when I was with my mom on Friday before she went in for surgery, we were in pre-op for a few hours, I was naming this dynamic that my mom and I do. And my mom tends to get overwhelmed. She forgets things. And I am incredibly proficient at (laughs) over-functioning. If I could get an A for over-functioning in my life, I would excel. Who else identifies with that, that you just... You catch every little thing that goes on. You're on high alert. You have tons of information about things. It's a tremendous asset, and it can also be really exhausting. I talked with my mom while we were in pre-op, because we were there for a few hours, about this dynamic, and she acknowledged it too. And so there's been a chance for some healing to come up and for me to also know that it's okay that I can be there for my mom, but for me to do overnight shifts with her is not going to be helpful for me. I'm feeling taxed out with the puppy, and she has a great support system and people that are willing to show up for her. And so for me, learning to step back, to be able to have a boundary and go, I want to be a really effective daughter. My job has been to coordinate the comings and goings of people. Everybody signed up, but making sure that we're on track with the meds and what needs to happen and all of these things. But what's happened is I've wanted to minimize that. This morning with my mom going to the ER, she had a friend that was here from from probably 6.30. I was kept trying to take a shower and something just kept coming up. And so her friend was able to take her to the ER. Then I was going to jump in the shower and then go relieve her friend. And as it turns out, because of COVID, no one can be with her in the ER. But I found myself minimizing, like feeling very, very stressed, but also minimizing how can I be so exhausted and frantic because somebody was with her last night, somebody was with her the night before, people have been here in four-hour shifts, my husband Steve is here helping me take care of the puppies. I'm not doing any of this on my own, and we had a surprise birthday party to go to at noon today, and I said to Steve, I need some help that I'm feeling like my bathtub is very, very full, my metaphorical bathtub, that I'm on edge. The puppy is starting to find rocks in the backyard. She's starting to dig holes. So the good news is we have a dog door and she often takes herself out to go to the bathroom. But she also, if there's water out there, she gets mud on her paws, she's digging holes, she's getting into things. So this level of awareness of making sure of where she is and then We keep the puppy out of my mom's house, so we have a door crack so that her dog can come through. But if her dog comes through, then the puppy goes back to my mom's house. And then we have my blind dog who doesn't understand why doors are closed and can't figure out if she can go to places. So (laughs) there's a lot of moving parts. And 
I was saying to Steve, like, I can't tell if it's a good, like, should I go to the party and then I'm going to enjoy it once I get there? Or is it going to be too much? Because often with paddling, I feel like I don't want to paddle and I go and I have a great time. And last night, Brenda, my paddle partner and I were planning on paddling today. And I was telling Steve, I'm exhausted. I took a nap yesterday morning. I fell asleep while we were watching TV last night. Then I slept through the night until I got up to take care of the dog and I was up for an hour. There's just a lot of moving parts that are going on and it's been a lot. And I couldn't tell, should I push and paddle today? Should I not paddle? We decided not to. I'm very grateful. That was definitely the right decision because I wouldn't have been available to talk to my mom's surgeon this morning and to help make the decision that she needed to go to the ER. But all of these little things are a lot. So I was asking Steve, like, should I go to this party? Should I not go to this party? And, you know, he said, do you think you're going to be able to focus? Do you think you'll be able to enjoy it? Will it be a good distraction? And I feel like my nerves are just all on fire. And as we're talking about it, the tears started to come. And that's when I just was identifying. I'm just feeling really overwhelmed. It feels like there's a lot going on and I need something that's going to be soothing and calming for me. And I don't feel like I have a lot of room right now to be engaging with people and to be hearing about them. I'm just kind of in a little bit of survival mode. And Jen and I were supposed to record yesterday, and she asked if I had flexibility with time. And as we were talking about it, I just decided it would really be better to not record. It worked for both of us. Then we made a plan to record this afternoon. And I just don't know that I have it in me. I really was not planning on recording. But what happened is, When I reached out to Jen via text to let her know I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to record and my mom was in the ER, she FaceTimed me. And I just got really tearful and we were talking about maybe recording tonight, but then Jen offered to record an episode on her own so that I wouldn't have to record. And I just got incredibly tearful. And this is pulling everything that I'm talking about back together is when we allow other people to be there for us there really can be this tremendous sense of community. And even though I'm stressed, there are people that are here for me supporting me. There are people here for my mom supporting her. There are people here supporting both of us. And the thought that Jen was willing to do a solo episode on her own just touched me incredibly. I think that many of us that have wounding tend to be hyper-independent. We don't like asking for help. If we ask for help, the expectation is that our need will be met. And if it's not, then I think many people have that fear of overwhelming feelings of disappointment, frustration, anger. And I think when you have wounding and you haven't done healing around your wounding, it's so much easier to take care of yourself and to not ask for anything. This is true for my mom. This is true for me. And part of the healing for her, allowing people to be there for her and For me, asking help from Jen, and then I was also communicating with the person that's coming in late this afternoon to take care of her, letting her know what was going on. And I said, I may be asking one of the other people who spent the night if she's willing to come and spend the night again. I want to feel confident that mom can get through a night without having to get up and being sick and somebody being there for her. And then the friend that's coming this afternoon said, if need be, she's happy to spend the night. And again, I just had this really overwhelming sense of gratitude that I don't have to do this alone. I don't have to bear it alone. I don't have to push myself beyond what my capacity is so that I'm resentful, tired, grumpy, angry, not available to take care of me, not available to take care of my pets, my partner, my mom, because I'm feeling taxed. It's really okay for us to ask for help to ask for support, to allow people in. And there's something that is so powerful about that sense of connection and allowing people to be there for us. The other thing that I noticed that was really interesting is when I was talking to Jen and was tearful, why this was my question, I don't know. But I just keep wanting to minimize, like, how can I feel so stressed if we've had people here, Steve is helping me. Like, why am I feeling so stressed and wanting to minimize it? It's not that bad. I can push through it. I'm at my limit right now. It's been a lot. And trying to be on alert for somebody who's not feeling well and to make decisions when they're not able to make those decisions and to triage. And I don't know about pain medication. I don't know about a knee replacement. I, you know, this is all new and letting that be okay. My question to you is. Does any of this resonate for you? How is it for you asking for help and support? 
Do you have people that you can reliably count on for help and support? Do you have a community? Many times, and what I find with some of my clients is they've grown up in environments that have been so unsupportive, and then they learn that they're highly sensitive, and they haven't surrounded themselves with people that really get how they are, and so they're accustomed to, they just expect people to go, you're being so sensitive about it. You're being too whiny. You're being too dramatic. Why do you need so much help? And they minimize their own experience, and they just don't have any sense of connection with people. So where are you at with that? And are you okay with having needs and asking for help? How much do you step in and help people? And if you do, are those relationships reciprocal? Because the other thing is we often learn as children that we get that sense of connection when we show up for other people. And we can have relationships that are very one-sided where we show up and we give and we provide and we support and we nurture others but there's not reciprocity there. And we don't know that that's a possibility because at least we found some kind of connection. This stuff runs really deep. And I'll tell you, as my mom's surgery was approaching, I was really rumbling with this aspect of my relationship with my mom that I didn't know wasn't healed around me being a caretaker and doing that for so many years and not being present in my body to go, This is more than I want to do. This is more than I can handle. This isn't my job. I'm a child. I shouldn't be doing this. I mean, whatever that stuff is, I'm not blaming. I'm not shaming. I'm just naming what I noticed coming up. And parallel to the friend that I was talking about in the beginning, as her family member got very ill unexpectedly, my friend was really rumbling with some of this trauma from their childhood and some unresolved feelings around their mother, and how do they rectify that while their mother is not doing well? And we talked about, you can hold space for both of those things. You can hold space for this young part that hasn't had a chance to heal, that's having anger and frustration, and you haven't had a chance to process through this, and you can be as present as you can for your mother. I was just talking with someone else who's having a very similar situation that they're realizing that, A lot of the dynamics in their family have not supported them, and they provide care for their mother. This is a new situation. And the mother often does not support the daughter and will side with other family members. And the daughter just feels like, I'm really mad at my mom, and I want to talk to my mom about it. Do I talk to my mom? And what we talked about is it's really important when this stuff comes up for you to work on your own healing. That yes, this is going on maybe with a sibling or a partner or a parent. If you're working with a therapist, and obviously talk to your therapist about this, but I think the inclination is as soon as we find out we're an HSP or there's wounding, we want to go straight to the conflicted relationship and try and get the other person to understand why what they're doing is hurtful to us. And if this person has been doing this hurtful behavior all along, chances are you giving them the words, I'm an HSP and this isn't okay is not going to change anything. The healing comes from you taking time to look at your wounding, working with a coach, working with a therapist, doing your own work to work on your healing, and you work on it in relationship with people that can help you do that reciprocal healing. And then you'll get clarity about, do you need to talk about this with the person that you felt wounded by? Sometimes you talk to them, sometimes you don't, sometimes you share some things. Just because you have this great awareness does not mean that they are going to be in a place where they can see it. I was just listening to something the other day. If I could tell you who it was, I I would, but I don't. What this person was saying is, the people that wounded us are also wounded. So just because we have an awareness of that wounding doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have the ego strength or the ability to own their behavior and to show up for us that they may go into a posture being very defensive or angry or they're not in their adult. So (laughs) that's a lot of information. Coming back into the moment, are there things that are feeling too taxing for you and do you give yourself permission to take a break to know that it's okay to not show up for everybody and to prioritize yourself. And if you don't, what are the beliefs that get in the way? And just today, I was struggling with that. Is it okay to not go to this party? Is it okay to stay home and take care of myself? Having people around us that can help reflect what we might need, that sense of compassion and love, and allowing ourselves to get that support can be so incredibly healing. And we've we've talked about this before, where it's kind of like a joy pain that I'm feeling the pain and the stress and the pressure of all the moving parts that are going on and trying to navigate them. 
and this sense of joy in there are people here that support me. There are people here that support my mom. There are people here that support all of us. And my mom is having an opportunity to have to advocate for herself because they will not allow me in the ER. The doctor is supposed to be calling. This is the only time I have ever recorded and consciously left my phone not on silent in case the doctor calls because I want to know what's going on. But I thought it was a good opportunity to sit down and share with you how do you navigate and manage in the middle of a crisis and what are the things that you need to do for yourself and to give you permission. You know, if you think about what is the thing that you don't want to do and if you knew that it was okay to not do it, do your shoulders just drop down and you have this big sigh like, ah, that's a relief, like one thing I can take off my plate. And I do think that there's something about this sense of trauma and responsibility and loyalty and dependability where we can get into that overdrive and just push ourselves and overfunction. And you don't have to do that anymore. You do not have to do that anymore. It is okay to take care of yourself. It is okay to trust that other people can take care of themselves. Obviously, if you're caring for a child or someone who's sick or disabled, and it's still okay to have limitations and to say, I, I can't do this. This is too much. I think that that is all that I have to say. I hope this is coherent. I used to just sit down and record. And then when COVID hit, I just feel like I've had brain fog and it's been much harder for me to have a cohesive thought. And then I finish recording and I go, oh, I forgot to talk about this or I forgot to talk about that. So then I started making notes. So this is my crisis recording. I feel pretty confident that my mom is fine, that really the concern was that she was going to have an anaphylaxis response due to the pain meds. And my guess is that she will be fine. I'm hoping that maybe they will be able to flush her with saline and just get those meds out and she will come home and continue to do well and strong in her recovery. She's doing amazing. I think that's all I have, y'all. If any of this resonated with you, you hear things that you struggle with and you want some help, you can reach out to me at unapologeticallysensitive.com. I have a couple spots open. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are feeling rested and peaceful. And if you're struggling and stressed and you're not okay, it's okay to not be okay. We've been on this pandemic for going on three years now, and that's a lot. There's a lot going on in the world. Things are really hard. And if you're someone who feels things very deeply, it can be a hard time for our tender little hearts. I was listening to something the other day that if you're not able to find what is joyful to you, can you find what gives you relief? And I think that relief will help when we are in survival mode. What would give you some relief? And if you continue to do that, that may lead you to some joy. All right, I think that's all I have. Remember, sensitivity is nothing to apologize for. It's our superpower. Have a blessed day. 